Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science, your weekly source for the latest science news. In the headlines this week, we've learned that the Earth's inner core is changing in shape, the oldest species of prehistoric bird with a short tail has been discovered, archaeologists have found the first tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh since that of Tutankhamun, and much, much more. Our top story this week is the discovery that the mysterious inner core of our planet is changing shape, according to new research. For many years now, scientists have noticed that the properties of seismic waves from certain earthquakes originating in the same places on the planet have been changing over time. This is a bit strange. Since these repeating earthquakes should be expected to have very similar seismic waves whenever they occur. But the waves were travelling through the planet's inner core, and so scientists began to suspect that something was actually changing in the core over the years, which in turn caused these observed differences in the waves. One idea that was put forward suggested that the rate of rotation of the inner core was changing. The Earth's core is divided into two sections, the solid metal inner core and the liquid metal outer core, and the inner core rotates within the outer core. Subsequent studies indeed confirm this hypothesized change of inner core rotation. Now though, researchers have used observations of more seismic wave data from repeating earthquakes to show that the inner core is physically changing in shape too. Seismic waves that graze to the boundary between the inner and outer core showed altered waveforms between recordings made from 2004 to 2008, suggesting that the shallow parts of the inner core change structure. So in addition to the rotational changes, it looks like our planet's core sometimes develops bulges, therefore deforming the inner core to outer core boundary. This brilliantly illustrates just how dynamic the deep Earth really is, and there's still lots more to discover about these mysterious processes. In other news, the most energised cosmic neutrino ever observed has been detected, and it's by a long way. Details of this discovery have been published in the journal Nature, and the neutrino was detected by the KM3 NET telescope, a deep sea underwater telescope consisting of two arrays that are still under construction, but already operational. I should say that the particle itself wasn't detected. In order to detect neutrinos, the telescope arrays detect jets of light from other particles that are spawned by the cosmic neutrino, in this case a muon. From this, scientists can work out the energy of the neutrino and roughly where it came from. The neutrino particle detailed in this study contained the energy of a hundred million billion visible light particles, and incredibly, about 20 times that of the previous record holder for the highest energy neutrino detected. The very fact that it has been detected expands our knowledge of the universe, as we now know for sure that the cosmic neutrinos of this magnitude of energy can be created. Because only a single neutrino was detected, it's not particularly easy to trace where it came from. But it may be the first case of a cosmogenic neutrino detected, a neutrino created when extremely energetic cosmic rays interact with background radiation from the Big Bang. First up in this week's paleontology news, an exciting discovery for fans of birds as the oldest ever short-tailed bird has been discovered in Jurassic rocks in China. Birds are predicted to have first diversified during the Jurassic period, but so far the only unquestioned Jurassic bird that's been discovered is Archaeopteryx from Germany. But now researchers have found a new species of Jurassic bird that's been named Baminornis jengensis, dated to about 150 million years ago. Baminornis has a short tail that ends in piga style, the fused tail vertebrae that modern birds have, making this the oldest known bird to have such a structure. It's also the only known bird from the Jurassic to have a piga style, since Archaeopteryx still had a long, more reptilian-like tail. The discovery of this ancient bird species pushes back the origin of the pigo style by almost 20 million years and sheds new light on the origin of this incredibly diverse lineage of animals. Up next in the news, paleontologists have revealed a beautiful, almost complete skull of an extinct hypercarnivorous mammalian predator in Egypt. It's a type of animal called a hyenodont, and it lived about 30 million years ago in the forested environment that once existed in this modern desert region. Ooh, exciting. 
Despite the name, these beasts are not closely related to hyenas, although there are some convergently evolved similarities. The skull belongs to a previously known species which has now been given a new genus name, Bastetodon certos. It was about the size of a modern hyena and would have had fearsome slicing teeth at the back of the jaws, perfect for shearing flesh. These teeth were driven by some powerful musculature, as indicated by the large attachment areas preserved in the new skull. All this is consistent with the animal being hypercarnivorous, specialising in a meaty diet. This wonderfully complete skull therefore adds to the known diversity of the hyenodont mammals, and also helps to sort out some taxonomic naming issues, which is always of great help to paleontologists. We always like to mess things up, so, you know. A wonderful new find. Also in the paleo news, a very interesting study has modelled how the extinction of the non-bird dinosaurs 66 million years ago may have impacted the structure of forests and in turn influenced the evolution of our own ancestors. Ooh. It's been hypothesised that the extinction of giant dinosaurs resulted in darker forest understories, since they no longer had these enormous animals knocking down trees and allowing more light in. These darker forest conditions in turn promoted the evolution of larger seeds and fruits. Bigger seeds gave plants more of a head start to grow from and thus compete with others for light, while fruits allowed their seeds to be dispersed further by animals. By modelling changes in seed and animal sizes across time, as well as relative light levels in forests, the researchers indeed found support for this hypothesis, showing that seed and fruit sizes quickly increased following the extinction. However, they then found that about 35 million years ago, the size trend reversed, as it was around this time that giant land mammals evolved and were engineering forests like the dinosaurs before them. Yet another reversal was detected around 50,000 years ago too, when the megafaunal extinctions were occurring and giant land mammals were disappearing once more. So considering that our primate ancestors were eating a lot of fruits, it seems this is another reason we have to thank the dinosaur extinction as it ultimately led to our own origins. And watermelons and bananas and grapes and oranges and apples. Can we go get fruit after this? And moving on to the more recent past, an ancient Roman basilica has been discovered in London underneath an office block fairly close to the Bank of England. This is an extraordinarily important find and archaeologists have been looking for London's first basilica for some time. A Roman basilica was a large building that was usually built just by or in the city's forum, the society and political heart of the city. A basilica could serve multiple functions. For example, they could be used as a courtroom or multiple courtrooms in some of the larger ones, and they could also be used as places of political decision-making. This basilica found in London was the first built by the Romans, who founded the city as Londinium at around 50 AD. It was built a few decades after the city's founding as part of Londinium's first forum, but the city expanded so quickly that a second, much larger forum was constructed a few decades later. The discovery of the first basilica is surely going to yield some fascinating finds about the heart of very early London. And the site will hopefully also be able to be open to the public one day, so everyone can see this wonderfully important piece of history. Some more news now from even further back in time, but not quite since we've already been looking at dinosaurs. As the first tomb of an Egyptian pharaoh since Tutankhamun has been discovered. This is a fabulous discovery and one that archaeologists initially thought was the tomb of a royal wife. But this conclusion was reconsidered when they found a larger door and staircase that would be expected for someone considered less than a king. It is the tomb of the pharaoh Thutmose II, believed to have reigned for about four years. He was the son of the more famous Thutmose I and husband and half-brother to the more famous Hatshepsut, who was one of the very few women to rule Egypt as pharaoh. The tomb discovered does not contain the mummy of Thutmose II, which was discovered in 1881. Archaeologists believe that the body was moved away from the tomb after flooding in or around the tomb shortly after his death. The discovery solves an important mystery in Egyptology, the previously unknown location of the tombs of the early 18th dynasty kings, of which Thutmose II was a part of. The uncovering of this pharaoh's tomb, who was an ancestor of Tutankhamun, could point the way to further discoveries in the area. So let's hope that this leads to some great new finds in the future.
In other news, scientists have used artificial intelligence tools to create new enzymes from scratch that can perform multi-step reactions, one of the most important features of naturally occurring enzymes. Previous efforts have been made to design enzymes capable of this, but this new research has produced synthetic enzymes that are 60,000 times better at speeding up reactions compared to past attempts. This is due to the new approach this team took to designing the structures. Rather than simply modifying already existing enzymes, the researchers used an AI tool to generate the overall design and then created a deep neural network to refine it even further. The scientists have emphasized that this research is still just proof of concept, however, and the new synthetic enzymes are still nowhere near as efficient as enzymes that have naturally evolved. But it does show that we will soon be able to create even more complex enzymes in the future that are capable of these multi-step reactions. It's pretty cool. Finally, for the news this week, we've got some very concerning news about the extent of our planet's sea ice. At this time of year, the Arctic should have reached its annual maximum sea ice extent, but it is currently 0.2 million square kilometers below anything previously recorded. It's well established that Arctic warming is nearly four times faster than the global average, and it is expected that it will be ice-free at the end of its summer at least once before 2050. Some studies suggest that it could be even sooner than that. At the other end of the Earth, Antarctic sea ice has been more resilient to our changing climate. That is, until the mid-2010s, when it started to show a series of very low sea ice extents, with 2023 having the lowest ever recorded. This should have been a 1 in a 2,000 year event, but 2025 is not far off reaching this all-time low as well. Over the five days preceding the 13th of February, the combined extent of the Arctic and Antarctic sea ice was 15.76 million square kilometers, which just breaks the previous five-day record low of 15.93 million square kilometers from January to February in 2023. Declining sea ice at the poles has a huge impact on native wildlife, such as polar bears and penguins, but it also affects the world's climate. Sea ice helps to keep the polar regions cold by reflecting the sun's light, Meanwhile, the darker patches of ocean absorb more heat, thus accelerating ice loss. A recent study has shown that polar ice has already lost around 14% of its natural cooling effect since the early to mid-1980s. A decline in sea ice at the poles will ultimately impact all of us, wherever we live. Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. You can follow Seven Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok, and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. And also follow me on Instagram because I'm amazing and really cool. As always, a big thank you to our patrons, including Andrew Cowam, Clara Middleton, Drav Strivastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotis, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Matt Grandist, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Ralph Balzac, Roberts Thomas, Sammy Voss, Staniforth Hopkins, Thomas F. Connery III, Timothy and Tedro, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. I don't know if there'll ever be a day I'll get through all of that in one. <laughs> <laughs>